Hey everyone, this is Matt from drawingtutorialsonline.com. Just wanted to do an impromptu hangout session for a little bit, a few minutes here. Um, just working on this torso drawing. I don't want to share the photo reference on YouTube because it's not my photo reference and I, I don't want to get um, nailed for any copyright infringement. Um, but uh, the point of this session here on YouTube is to um, just have some fun and just to render and uh, answer any questions that you have. Let me just, uh, why can't I pause that? Okay, cool. All right, uh, so basically what I'm doing here is just like I said, this is how I like to practice um, drawing. I'll just you know do a quick torso like this and um, it, it's a great way just to kind of get back in the mindset of drawing if you haven't drawn it in a while. Welcome everybody. Uh, from Turkey, wow, really cool. So what I'm doing here, if you're familiar with my channel, I, I do this type of shading where I just kind of do this little circular stroke. And you see what I'm doing there? I'm just doing like this circular pencil stroke and I'm trying to show that this body is very round and not flat. So I'm doing all of these light little uh, strokes, okay? Yeah, so this right here is a sphere. So if I was going, so I'm, I'm going to just um, stick with this right now. I, I want to work this uh, torso a little bit so I can post it on my Instagram page because uh, I haven't posted anything there in, in a while and I need to get my butt literally um, going on some Instagram drawings for my page there. Uh, so yeah, this is just your sphere. So you want to use a very light touch over here not too dark i'm barely pressing down on the pencil you probably can barely even see that and this is a uh, cast shadow there's some tooth of the paper that's not allowing me to make it look really really dark um, again this is just very informal i'm, I'm just kind of messing around uh, tomorrow's class i don't even know uh hey tito welcome hey little miss random 17 i'm doing good noah or yeah Jessica, welcome. Uh, so yeah, tomorrow's class, I, I usually have my formal YouTube class on Saturday, uh, but I just wanted to have some fun here. I was drawing alone in my studio and I'm like, you know what, let me just kind of go live for a little bit and see where it brings me. Um, so I'm just kind of just sharing with you how I would keep my drawing touch going. Okay, so it's just uh, doing a lot of looking at the photo reference. I have my photo reference right in front of me. Let me just move something here so I can see the chat. Cool. Yeah, drawing hair. Um, definitely pretty hard. So m maybe I'll, I'll add like a little hair. So what I've done here is, um, let me just kind of get that section back. So just trying to put some light tone Put in some light tone here. Uh, there's her spine with some significant shadow. And then I'm going to measure from the underarm line to her collarbone, right about there. And then her trapezius. I might have that a little too tall. Uh, so trapezius. And what I'm going to do is just, she's got a different hairstyle. I might just add my own hairstyle here. So maybe... Um, this model's gonna, um, this is how I would maybe start blocking in the hair. Uh, and maybe this hair is gonna be kind of coming on down on one side. So I'm gonna go very light with that, okay? But I really wanna do just a little bit more rendering on that. Um, thank you for that, I really, wow, Lithuania, holy Moses. Um, that's cool, so uh, uh, originally I thought I was gonna do like a little bun here on the back of the head. But I think I'm going to abandon that, and I'm just, while I'm doing this YouTube uh, stream here, maybe what I'll do is I'll just work a little bit on the hair. So where's the light coming from? So that's the question that you need to ask yourself every time you do a drawing. Where is the light coming from? Okay, so the light's coming from the top left, and so I need my hair to have, a, here's our line that separates light from the dark. Uh, and here's our line that separates the light from the dark. I need to do the same thing on the hair. So what I'll do when I first start drawing is I'm just gonna block in the shadow side of the hair with the understanding that the hair, the light's coming from the top left. I'll erase out that bun. 
Yeah, that's okay. I wasn't expecting many people here. I'm not concerned about that today. Um, that there's not a lot of people. It doesn't matter to me. I'm just kind of having fun. And I, I don't expect a lot of people to join when I just all of a sudden randomly go uh, live on, on YouTube. I did send out an email, but people are kind of busy uh, with their lives and um, they don't expect me to all of a sudden go li uh, live on YouTube on a, on a Friday afternoon. It's raining here on Eastern Long Island. Um, the atmosphere is going to change. It's going to get much colder. So you see what I'm doing here? I'm, let, let's get rid of the bun. Where's my, all my stuff is here. Okay, so I'm just, that's the wrong eraser. Let's get rid of the bun. Okay, let's do this. Just a circular stroke. So now, um, so that's just how I would block in the hair. Okay. Um, uh, I get it. I get it. Yeah, I, I have my hobbies too. Uh, whether drawing is your hobby or it's not your hobby. But I, I have hobbies outside of drawing. And, you know, sometimes I'll get like really into them and I'll pay attention to the people on YouTube and then I fall off just like everybody else. Um, hey, Karen, welcome. Yeah, this is very impromptu. I don't know about my accent, though. <laughs> ah, OK, there's my camera. OK, good. My camera's been going in and out lately. Hopefully it doesn't go in and out today. Um, I think my I'm stretching my cable too much. So I'm going to just I'm having fun here. Let's do a loose strand of hair. I don't want this head to be totally round. So hair. Let's throw in an angle over there. Okay, so let's just, let's just leave that as like blocked in for now. We'll, we'll come back to it. And I really want her hair to be sitting on her trapezius. So I, I, I love line. I know a lot of people ask me, why do you outline your figure drawings? It makes them flat. Uh, it, it's a sacrifice. I, I love line so much. Like I've, I've been there, done that with the tone next to tone. And, um, I'm just kind of, uh, I, I, I just really love what line does to drawings and it, it, it really makes everything so much more fun. Yeah. It's a little bit more stylized, but it, it's all good. So let's wrap the back around up near the scapula. It's a total cylinder. I think I have this part of the back a little wide. This should be much, much lighter than what I'm doing. So this is her scapula right over here, the bottom of the scapula bone. It's kind of protruding. Okay, again, I, I can't show you the reference um, because the reference is not mine and I don't want to uh, violate anybody's copyright. I don't think that would be cool. Uh, but again, this is just very, very impromptu. And usually I work from my own photos, but I just found this photo and I'm like, you know what? I, this is so cool. I, I got to draw this. Uh, it's just everything today is extremely random. Hey, South Africa, how are you? Emily, welcome. Light from the top right, you've got it. I hope I didn't say top left. Uh, welcome, Mexico. Any tips on hairlines for female hair? Hairlines. So, what you know, just some generalities with hair. Uh, edges of hair should be soft. Okay. Um, what I see a lot of my students do by accident, just because they, they don't know, is um, in the beginning when I first have them as a student, um, they make hair too hard edged and hair is extremely soft. Uh, now, some style hair with certain haircuts can be pretty sharp. Like if somebody cuts their bangs right across and has jet black hair against like a really light forehead, um, it could be hard edged, no doubt. But hair should be extremely soft, and that is one of the most important things. And um, it's it's hair is really all about. Uh, I don't know how this would be on the top. I'm just kind of doing the head out of my imagination. Uh, let's just leave it soft for now. I'm using so I I have details of my art materials in the description of the video. But to cut to the chase, I'm just all of the drawings that I've done on my YouTube channel. It, they're all done with the Prismacolor Coal Erase Pencil. I don't use graphite. I stopped using graphite many, many years ago. And the reason why uh, is just because I get better results with this pencil than I do with graphite. It's, I think graphite is better uh, for most people, but for me, this pencil 
it just makes me draw better than with graphite. So that's why I use it. It's not the best pencil out there because you see what I'm doing here. It does take a while to build up um, your tone, but that's what I like about it. I, I like that um, it takes me a little while to build up these darks and I don't, you know, again, I have graphite here. I was using, well, maybe I do, maybe I don't. I have graphite. So many years I just drew with my mechanical pencil with graphite and I was happy drawing that way. I just, I can't do it. Hey, Phil, how's it going, man? That last um, portrait you did was uh, one of your best. Um, definitely one of your best. Everything was just so much softer. Uh, your eyes were so much better. Uh, it all looked really, really good. And I, I'm really psyched that you're using the Critique Gallery to help you because it's really, it's, um, you don't have to use it. You, it's there for you. Um, so it's good that you're taking advantage of it. Um, aren't there places that are less soft dependent on the light? Yes, totally. Um, but just as in general, uh, when you paint or draw hair, in general, people tend to draw hair too sharp uh, with sharp edges, and, and you want to have more soft edges versus hard edges, but not all edges need to be soft. Then what is it made of? Um, not sure about that question, then what is it made of? This is just a black colored pencil. Not sure what it's made of. No, Philip, you're the hard worker. You're, you're just, I've never seen anyone work as hard as you with all these digital portraits, so uh, kudos to you. Thank you. I, I, oh my God, I, Abdirahim, Abdirahim. Hopefully I didn't say your name wrong. Okay, so let me just refocus my eyes on this. My eyes are doing really good. I, I, I'm on, you, you ever have allergies? Well, I have a allergies today because I just do. I was outside yesterday just, uh, raking some leaves, which why I was doing that, I don't know. I shouldn't be doing that. I should be inside my studio doing this, but definitely got some allergies from doing that. So my eyes are bugging a little bit today. Um, all right. Yeah. So the critiques. Um, so I, I own a website. It's been uh, live, this website, since 2008, August 9th to be exact. So I've had this website for uh, 12 years, and um, I have all my courses on the website, and every single Monday I do a video critique of member artwork. So members can post uh, at least um, one piece of art with their photo reference, and every Monday I'll critique it, and critiques on that website usually last about um, eight to 10 minutes, depending, because there are a lot of images, and, and I can get a lot done in, in uh, eight to 10 minutes in terms of telling you some suggestions for your artwork. So yeah, I do that um, on in the members area of my website. Yeah, so uh, there, there's a video from a couple of Saturdays ago that you can watch where I really get into um, shading techniques. So this live stream is just me hanging out and sketching, uh, really nothing in the, in the ways of like uh, demonstration stuff. It's just you watching me render and just having a little chat here. Um, I should have a scrap piece of paper. Why didn't I have a scrap piece of paper? Uh, proportions. So what you can do, uh, there's, let me put, talk about proportions in terms of this drawing. Uh, you could say, how many heads high is this torso? So a head would be, uh, or maybe from here to here, you just have to use size relationships. So you could measure the whole thing by the head. So let's just say the head is from here to here. So how many heads would that be? That would be one, two, I'm gonna say roughly three and a quarter heads high this torso is. So most of the figures that I draw, so to answer your question in, in a very, very short, short way, um, that's how I would deal with proportions. I would draw something and, um, and then I would draw the head in and then I would start to say, okay, how many heads high is that torso? How many heads high is that standing figure? Another way to do it is to um, think about this negative space over here. Okay, so there's a deliberate negative space. And what I would do is I would draw this negative space between her arm and her torso, and I would just kind of look at that space 
and then I would compare what's around it to that little space. Uh, so that that's called thinking about size relationships, and and that's how I draw most things. Is uh, you can use a ruler, no doubt. Uh, I'll use size relationships, especially with portraits. I'll I'll do size relationships. So let's start this arm over here just a little bit. I I don't like that I drew it so round. Yeah, it's just um, the way that you're going to get better is go into each drawing that you do with um, with delib deliberance or with, what's the word that I'm really looking for? Intention. So don't just start, don't just sit down and, and randomly just draw anything. You're not going to really improve that way. Instead, you want to improve by doing the three disciplines. So you want to draw from photos just because it's practical. You want to draw from life because it's necessary. And you want to draw out of your imagination. So do all three. And maybe um, when you draw from life, your intention is going to be to just practice direct observation, put stuff in your mind and just draw. Drawing from photos could be where you try to draw proportions um, and get that type of stuff um, practiced in. And drawing out of your imagination is when you should try to draw things that you've drawn from photos and from life out of your imagination. And if you can do those three things, uh, that's going to be really good for your drawing skills. Okay, I, I don't like that arm because it's it's too round. It's killing me, that, that shoulder arm thing. Okay, so let me, um, where's my little eraser? You've got to be kidding me. Mono zero, mono zero, where did it go? Give me a second. Ah, found it. So I love this eraser. Dana, who is a member of my website, turned me on to this eraser. Uh, I just have only been using it for less than a year, but it's great because you can take a razor blade and just slice the edge. And uh, so this shoulder for me right now is a little too round. I want to angle it a touch. I want to pull this out. I want that collarbone a little bit cleaner there. Okay, that line's a little heavy for me. Um, you know, it's funny. When I draw off video, uh, you got it. By chance, I want to be accepted to a standard arts, art school in my area. Are there requirements regarding, regarding portfolio? Yeah. So... Not sure uh, why my video keeps cutting out. That's going to drive me nuts if that keeps doing it. So basically, really, there's always something with a live stream. So uh, I could talk about your uh, portfolio for uh, days because I used to teach uh, pre-college portfolio uh, at the School of Visual Arts every Saturday. It was a great class. It was all high school students. Thank you, Philip. I really do appreciate that. Uh, I use that eraser too. Love it. Yeah. No, thank you, Philip. I, I really do appreciate that. Uh, so I'm going to have to figure out what's going on with my connection with that camera. Uh, I'm really ready for a 4K camera, to tell you the truth. Um, the cameras that I've had, I've had them for many, many years. Yeah, maybe it's the faulty cable. I, I, it's, a, it's a long cable. It's got a connection, and it's about 12 feet long because um, my camera is very far away from my computer. And so it's, I got to just look into it because that's going to annoy the heck out of me. I hate when, when things uh, are like that. So getting back to your portfolio, um, what you don't want to have in your portfolio is anything that is copied. Okay, Never. The worst thing that you can do is copy um, somebody else's art and put that in your portfolio. Like I had a, a kid in pre-college he loved like this anime artist and he would copy that ar anime artist's work and that's what was in his portfolio. And you're never going to get accepted if you're copying another artist's work because it doesn't really show um, your creativity and your originality. So no fan art uh, at all in, in your portfolio. So you need to have a mix. A, a lot of it also depends on the department that you're trying to get into. So the animation department would have complete different requirements than say the illustration department so the illustration department would want images in your portfolio that tell stories uh, the animation department would want images in your portfolio that show motion okay so 
I, I could give you some general things, but that I guess that's more of like a general uh, thing. Uh, it, it depends on the department that you're going for. Illustration would be completely different than um, animation in terms of what they're looking for the most. But there are some... Um, there are some things that you, you always want to have life drawings in your portfolio. Figure drawings are also very good. I, when I was in high school, I wasn't going to a figure drawing class, but I would still draw the clothed figure. That, that's really beneficial. So have some um, figures. Any way that you can draw somebody from life, maybe a family member is laying down on the sofa watching TV, um, draw them from life. I'm just trying to raise that shoulder, and that's a life drawing, okay? You, I, there was no way I was going to a life drawing when I was in high school. When I was in high school, I was in the woods riding my, my BMX bike uh, or playing hockey in the street. I, I wasn't going to go to a life drawing class. Um, so, yeah, you, you can still draw people from life, family members. You can draw pets from life. So that would be a really great thing for you to uh, have in your portfolio, life drawings. So I'm teaching myself art for the most part. Is there a sequence of topics I should be doing like fundamentals? Um, so a, a, no, a, everything for me is um, I, t I teach people how to draw through the figure. And there's a sequence to that. And the figure could be also a statue at a museum. You can use that uh, because it's kind of the same thing. And it, it all starts with um, the skeleton, gesture, form and how light hits form. That's a very quick sequence that you can keep in mind. So the rough skeleton, okay. Is the, is the camera on the live stream? Just give me a thumbs up. Um, Phil, if you're still with us, do you see the camera going dark like that? I'm curious. Because that would be really amateurish if that's happening a lot. So I've got to fix that for tomorrow. Shoulder feels a little heavy to me. And let me resharpen this pencil. It's in and out. Thanks, Dawn. Appreciate that. It flashes on and off. Okay. It's glitching now and again. All right, that, that sucks. Oh, Jesus. Okay, thank you. Um, Technic, yeah, it, 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 you want to know something? It um, was so much easier to be an artist when there was no technology. <laughs> it was so much easier to be an artist when there was no technology because when I was younger in my 20s, I just used to sit and paint all day. Uh, paint book covers and uh, my parents might be watching this this week because sometimes they watch me on YouTube they've got YouTube on their TV and they'll they'll know they're probably shaking their head um, when I was younger I would just be in my studio painting for like eight ten hours a day when I first started working as an illustrator there was no computer there was no video cameras there was no iPhone um, there was just art and painting and drawing and I, I wasn't distracted with technology so I love technology, I love YouTube, and I, and I love all of this stuff, but man, it's, it's a huge distraction mentally when things don't go right, and then it, it just takes so much time away from being an artist, uh, because I'm a solo entrepreneur, I don't have a team of people around me, and I've always worked on my own, I love being self-employed, uh, however, uh, I'm not a videographer, and I've been doing video since 2006, but when these things go wrong. It just takes so much time away from the time that you actually draw. Um, so yeah, sucks. Yeah, absolutely. It, you, you can, you know, it's, it's, it's really in terms of, if you don't have a lot of time to practice drawing, it's not about, I, I know people who like draw for like five, six hours a day and they don't get better. Again, you have to draw with intention. So the first thing you have to have um, if you want to get better is a role model, like a role model for the style of art that you want to do so you're crystal clear as to what you want to improve. Do you want to improve doing a drawing like this 
Uh, do you want to improve being more stylized? Do you want to improve drawing portraits? Like there's, it can't be, I just want to learn how to draw better. What do you want to draw better? And what style of art do you want to get better at? Okay, so for me, my role models were when I was in college, like let's, let's say one of my role models was Vermeer. Um, and then when I graduated from college, I was an illustrator, and my role model, one of them was Norman Rockwell. So I wanted my paintings to look like his in terms of the quality. So that would be a recommendation. And the recommendation is first you draw with intention, but you have to have a, a, a launch point. And the launch point is going to be your style and what do you want to get better at. And uh, so if I wanted to get better at portraits, that, that's all I would basically do. So Philip's on the live stream and he was a coaching student. And so how would Philip get better at doing portraits? Well, uh, he just, you have to be a master at light and shade. You really have to understand um, form and how light hits form. You have to be pretty good with textures and your digital paintbrush. You have to understand the skull. It would be really nice to know anatomy of the head. So those are like five or six things that um, I would practice if I wanted to get better at portrait drawing. I would do the uh, surface planes of the head as well, the surface planes uh, little model. Um, what would keep them recognizable is you build your characters out of shapes, um, that are easy to like, so you build your character, you design your character with simple shapes, and then you find the center line of the torso. So you can turn that, find the center line of the head. And that's a great way to make that character recognizable all the time. Yeah, Philip. So in, in terms of the coaching, um, what I'm going to do is I probably won't do the coaching again until next July, uh, June, mid June into July, um, just because of the classes at SVA that I'm teaching. It's just it's too much uh, because those classes require like prep work. And I got to look at the students' homework. Um, there's a lot going on, and then doing the regular stuff with the website, and in the winter time. Um, I do spend more time inside drawing in the wintertime, but uh, yeah, it's, there's just too much going on right now for me with the coaching. So I've taken all the coaching off of the website um, until next summer, because next summer, I think I'm teaching, they asked me to teach a class in, in June, uh, May into June. So I'll definitely do the coaching in July into August. Do you, be, do you prefer a lot of bad drawings or not as much? Yeah, I mean, I can show you I have a house full of bad drawings. <laughs> That's cool. Thank you, Lucas. I really do appreciate that. Um, it's, it's funny because some of the stuff on YouTube is very valuable, but being just like if I, I can see if you were just somebody um, on YouTube watching videos and you randomly came across some of my videos, it, it would be hard um, to improve versus going through like a linear course from like a start to finish course. Um, I think it's much easier to improve that way. But I, I, I learn stuff on YouTube from, you know, the things that I do for my hobbies. I, I, I definitely learn a lot. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. It's, it's, you know, so, some people intuitively have a style and some people have to find their style. And I think the people who intuitively have a style and everything they draw and paint kind of looks the same, like their style, they have it easier if they like their own style than people who search for a style. People who search for a style, they have it a little bit harder um, because, you know, it. you can do a drawing and it's pretty good, but you're like, I don't like it. I, hey, Aura. Welcome. I'm just doing like an informal thing here today. Uh, what sketching paper surface do you think is best for hyperrealism? Uh, for me, if I was going to work on a drawing for many hours, I would do it on illustration board, not paper, because uh, you can see this paper starting to like, I don't know if you can see it, but it's starting to buckle a little bit. Um, so four ply Strathmore illustration board is what I would use. It's 100% rag paper. Uh, it's not, it's archival. 
So if I'm going to do something that is what you're saying, hyper-realism, uh, I would definitely use illustration board. Now there's all different types of illustration boards, so it would be up to you to go to the art supply store if it's open in your local area and just kind of um, feel some boards out, maybe buy a couple, and because there's all different kinds at all different price points. But if I was going to, this is just regular cheap Strathmore drawing paper. It's, it's no, nothing expensive. Is it good to be inspired by anyone or a cartoon? Um, you have to, if, if, let's say you go on Instagram and you look at other artists. Do you see similarities in who you're gravitating towards? So when I go on Instagram and I look at things, um, I gravitate towards people that um, are kind of what I like. So that will kind of tell you what your style might be. Um, it, it's who you look at, like who you look at on YouTube, who you follow on YouTube, who you follow on Instagram, the artists, the teachers, what type of art do they do? That's probably going to give you a clue as to what you like to do. Like you're certainly not going to watch something that you don't like. Yeah, so there's so that's a great question uh, from Brinker. If you keep drawing a cube, a cylinder, it's it's only going to get you so far. You're going to become so so very bored. So here's my philosophy with that: you need to um, do your practice drawings, and you need to do a body of work. If you just do practice drawings, you're going to get bored out of your skull, and everything's going to be this thing that is practice, 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 and and that's no fun. That's not going to give you any identity. I'm just going to put some loose strands of hair. That's not going to give you an identity. You have to build up your identity and your style as an artist, and how do you do that? Not by practice drawings all the time, but by working on your own artwork, making finished pieces, and they may not come out exactly the way that you want them to come out, but that's what you need to do, Okay. Um, because practice is like you're a hamster on the on the spinning wheel and you're constantly doing the same thing over and over and over again. And so what I used to do um, when I was learning how to paint to become an illustrator post-college is I would wake up in the morning and I would go into my studio and I'd practice drawing for about 20 minutes. And I would practice drawing George Bridgman drawings. I would practice copy an old master paintings, just a warm up. And then I would go into my painting for a book cover or for a sample for my portfolio. And um, so I would make my own illustrations. And that was my practice. If I would never have become an illustrator, if I just kept doing practice exercises. So you, you got to look at the bigger picture. What's the bigger picture? Um, the bigger picture is your portfolio, your body of work, and then what do you enjoy drawing? Do you like to draw cars, landscapes, people, portraits, animals? If you don't um, draw what you like, uh, you're not going to be successful. So what I like to draw is uh, the body, uh, the figure. I love portraits. I also love landscapes, uh, but there's only so many hours in the day, and I, I have to make decisions. I'm always looking out the window when the FedEx truck comes by or the UPS truck comes by. It's... It's like there's a little thing about this like little bulldog on um, Instagram where he made an order on Amazon and five minutes after he made the order on Amazon, he's looking out the window for the FedEx truck. <laughs> it was pretty good. Sinuses are going crazy. So um, what do I like about this piece? What do I not like about this piece? She's got some pretty broad shoulders. Um Maybe we can bring that in a little bit. Let's bring this in. Oh, yeah, my sinuses are going crazy today. So let me get that eraser. I'm stupid and smart, aren't we all? Definitely. Okay. Thank you, Andre. I appreciate that. If you guys could give this video a thumbs up, that would be awesome. Um, if you could subscribe to the channel so you get notified when I go live. Or uh, somebody told me that uh, YouTube doesn't send out emails when people go live. But if you, I, I go live um, 
on Saturday mornings, but sometimes I'll do something random like this. So it would be helpful if you can subscribe to the channel and maybe um, click on the notifications. Uh, what you could do, uh, I'm not doing any hardcore promotion. Everything that I'm talking about right now is free. Uh, you could go to my website. The link is in the description below. It's members.drawntutorialsonline.com. Uh, you can go there and there'll be an email opt-in form. I don't spam you with sales emails. I maybe have like a couple sales to my website a year, but you could subscribe, uh, give me your email so I will email you when I go live. And in doing so, there's always a trade-off when you give up your email. Um, you get a free course when uh, it's a mini course on how to draw with on illustration board, uh, the figure with white charcoal pencil, this pencil. Um, it's, it's a cool little course and it, it tells you what not to do with white charcoal pencil because when people draw with a white charcoal pencil, they overuse it and things get too chalky. So you could subscribe to that on my website. There's a little window that will pop up and, um, yeah, you can get notified when I go live to that way. Cause I send out emails when I go live. Um, Lil Miss Random. Thank you. I appreciate that. Romania. I had a coaching student from Romania. She was, I, you correct me if I'm wrong. I apologize if I'm wrong. Uh, Transylvania. She was literally from Transylvania. Thank you. Uh, Mander. I can't. Christina. I'll say Christina. My cousin's name is Christina. I can say that easily. Um, okay, so what are we drawing here? Like when we draw, we're drawing anatomy. So I'm just drawing part of the scapula. You, you have to look at what is underneath the skin. Um, any tips on figure drawing for animation? It's all about gesture, George. And um, uh, there's rhythm lines and gesture lines. And so a, a couple of key things with um, that is do not outline everything equally. If you outline Every, yeah, it's in and out again. I'm going to have to fix that when we're done with the live stream. Thank you, Alexandra. Um, you have to just understand for animation, everything is short and fast. Everything's about movement. So this drawing would not be good for animation. This is a very still drawing. It's a very quiet drawing. Um, it's only partially done. I'm not drawing the whole figure. So it's something that um, we do a little bit in class and, and when we are actually in a class when um, we're not working via Zoom. Um, I, so I'm doing something new on my website actually this week. I'm really, really excited about it. I'm going to be having a life drawing class via Zoom with a live model clothed. Uh, she's wearing athletic shorts and a, an athletic top. And I'm going to be teaching gesture drawing techniques and I'm really, really excited about it. Uh, so I do the, the live stream on YouTube, uh, and this is just random uh, today, but uh, with my website, things are a little bit more deliberate, and I'll be teaching gesture drawing techniques um, in that class. I think it's going to be Tuesday at uh, 4.15 Eastern Standard Time, New York time. Oh, cool. Transylvania, awesome. Yeah, she was a digital artist and she was intense and she got better quickly. She really put in a lot of work. So um, it was awesome to coach her. That was awesome. She was, I haven't seen her in a long time. Okay, so right now this side of the body is getting a little muddy. Okay, now this side of the rib cage over here where I'm pointing is definitely not as light as the butt and it's definitely not as light as the shoulders. So shoulders are top plane. Butt is top plane. This is front plane. So what we need to do to take away a little bit of the gray mud is just go a little bit darker over here next to the spine. So next to the spine, this is a muscle that is a very tall muscle that goes from your sacrum to the base of your neck uh, into your cervical vertebrae, and it's called the sacrospinalis. And so it's just there are two columns on each side of your spine, sacrospinalis. And so what I want to do here is just go a little bit darker with that shadow. Ah, the dogs are barking. Gotta love it. 
um, school buses outside. Getting a little muddy. So we want to just go a little bit more with that. I have a problem with the background in portraits. I can't get ideas. So uh, a ver if you study old masters like John Singer Sargent, uh, Jerome, people like that, John William Waterhouse, who did, if you just Google John William Waterhouse uh, portrait drawing, you'll get some really good ideas. So there's this thing called a reverse gradation. And your background goes from dark to light that way. The body goes from dark to light the other way. So gradations in a nutshell. I have a, um, a live stream, Shiraj, I hope I'm saying your name right. I have a live stream video on how to handle backgrounds for portraits. It's, it's in the live stream playlist on my channel. So you'll get some really good ideas from that video. I forgot the name of the video. It's been a very long time since I did it. But it's, it's about backgrounds for your portrait drawings. And uh, it's, you'll get ideas. That, that will be really helpful to you. Reverse gradations are what you need to do. Um, yeah. Oh God. There's a great little anatomy book that is not expensive on Amazon. I think it's Sarah Simblet, um, anatomy for artists. They're all called anatomy for artists. Um, there's two anatomy books. They're on my shelves. I, I don't want to get up and get them right now, but, um, Sarah Simblet, it's a skinny little yellow book. It's awesome. Um, and then there's another awesome anatomy book that is truly the most common. So if you go on Amazon and you look for Samra, Sarah Simblet, S-I-M-B-L-E-T, and that other anatomy book will probably pop up, has an African-American model on the cover with a white background. It's, it, that's my most favorite anatomy book, and I forgot the name of it. The author will give it away. It's also called Anatomy for Artists. So if you want to have a photo shoot with models, appreciate that, man. I don't know Michael Hampton. I apologize for that. I'm kind of living in my own little world. I, I don't, f I know of a couple of other artists. I, maybe I do know Michael Hampton, but is he on um, YouTube? I, I don't follow any other artists on YouTube. I'm just kind of so busy doing my own thing. Saudi girl, welcome. Um, so if you're going to have a photo shoot with models, it's all about the values of the clothing uh, versus the values of the background. So like we were, I had a class this morning at the School of Visual Arts via Zoom and the model was set up perfectly. She had like a middle tone background and um, a light hit in her. So she had the light hit in her light skin. She had a middle tone shadow and the background fabric was a light middle tone. So it's really about the values. Okay. Um, with character design, values, values, values. So I, I've seen um, animation students uh, have a character that has light skin, black clothing, and then they would put that character into like a dark uh, nighttime forest scene, and it would just be like you'd have this oval head bouncing around uh, the forest, and you didn't even see the body because all the values were the same value. So you, you have to really think about your value structure when you are um, planning out your character design. What is the character going to be against? Michael Hampton. He has a channel, but it's small. But it sounds really familiar. I, I apologize. I don't know. Damn. But it, 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 it his name sounds really familiar. There's a lot of great artists out there. I mean, it's crazy. Crazy how many good artists there are out there on Instagram. Um, you know, it, when I first started becoming an illustrator and I was young um, and I was getting beat up by all the art directors because it was so hard to become an, an, an illustrator in New York City, um, if I saw all these artists online on Instagram with my fragile ego at the time, I don't know if I would have succeeded. Like, I, I just was in my own little um, world trying to get better as a painter and I would just see images like at the library. There was no internet. I just used to look at old master books and maybe like a drawing magazine. So nowadays, there's so many great people that you see. I can see where if you're struggling to get better, it can get a little intimidating. So sometimes you need to shut everything off and just kind of do your own thing. 
Ah, thank you, Kathy from Germany. Love it. Thank you for uh, visiting with us today. Y yep. Okay. Okay, cool. So I'll look up Michael Hampton after the live stream. I promise I will. Again, there's, there's incredible teachers everywhere. Um, so I'm just like a little, uh, a, a little kind of leaf in a big pond of many, many drawn teachers. Okay, let's see, where are we? Yeah, so values make up, um, little Miss Random, values make up 80% of your images and color makes up 20%. So values are more important than color. Okay, so really plan black and white as well as color. Um, and color is really going to be defined by your style, uh, character of who you are. Do you like bright colors or dull colors? Thank you, Christina. Yeah, yeah, I had Vivian as a uh, foundation drawing student, and uh, she was intense, to say the least, and she hated, Vivian hated doing the long drawings uh, because she was just, you just knew that Vivian was going to become a professional animator, and uh so she dealt with doing some of the longer drawings. Like sometimes I make my students do a drawing for an hour and in the animation department, that's way too long. Um, and so then she used to come back and visit a little bit. And I got really lucky. She came back. She was sick as a dog and she came back. I had a fourth year class and she's like, do you want to film my sketchbook? I'm graduating. And I did. And I'm so thankful that, that she came back and I filmed her sketchbook video. Um, yeah, I know of her success, no doubt. She's really popular at the college that I teach at. Uh, and yeah, she's awesome. S some of the students I have are really nuts good. Really nuts good. Yeah, of course I know Proko. He's, um, he's I guess, the master of YouTube teachers. <laughs> he has a lot of people working for him. I saw that video of his studio. So he's a machine. I would call Proko a machine. Uh, very talented. Um, has a great setup. Very professional. Uh, very, very professional. Um, so yeah, he's, he's... Hey, Proko, I know you probably don't even know who I am, but um, your stuff, I, I like how you run your business. Very professional. And uh, we probably have so many of the same likes, me and um, Proko, no doubt because we do the same thing. I just do it on a smaller scale. So life is about choices. I, I, I really like being a solo entrepreneur. Um, I had people work for me in the past uh, when I used to make DVDs, uh, my mom, my dad, my sister, and um, it got a little crazy there. And so I like being a solo entrepreneur. I liked having my parents work for me, no doubt, but it's a lot. And um, I no longer make DVDs because they're not relevant anymore. So I'm just like a solo entrepreneur and I, I enjoy just working alone. Um, there's less cogs in the wheel and it's just an easier on, on a daily basis. So again, life's about choices. Yeah, he's been around for a very long time. I started my YouTube channel. I don't remember if it was 2006, 2006 or 2007. And he started his almost at the same time. Um, but he took his YouTube channel a little bit more seriously than I took mine. I uh, put all of my energy in my membership site, so I was kind of flying under the radar. So I was making dozens and dozens of courses and videos from my website, um, and I really wasn't doing too much posting on YouTube. I didn't understand the value of YouTube. Um, and so he understood the value of YouTube much more than I did. Hence, he has much more of a following. Karina is on YouTube. Yeah, draw, draw fee. Oh, wow, awesome. Yeah, Karina's is awesome, too. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, God, my eyes are going crazy. I got two lights. They're really, really bright. Holy Moses. Well, it's snowing in Scotland. Love your drawing. <laughs> God, I love to... Um, there's a show that I watch on Netflix. Um, God, it's uh, The Last Kingdom. Is that, isn't that filmed in Scotland? The scenery there is unbelievable. Or maybe it was Game of Thrones that was partially filmed in Scotland. 
So I'm just going to try to make this edge line a little bit more complicated. Thank you, Little Miss Random. Um, so sharpen that edge up a little bit. We're going to fade this drawing away. So yeah, so animation's all about speed. It's, it's about movement. If you want to get into a college that teaches animation, the chances of you getting into that college with having a portfolio that has motion and movement and gesture and animals running and people doing things. Gesture just means a movement. I'm handing you a cup of coffee. This pose has no gesture. It's just a pose. Uh, but it's an act, a gesture is an action. So you need to draw things doing an action. So a person doing a thing, um, answering a phone, serving a cup of coffee, walking their dog, that's a gesture. That's a thing, an action, a movement. That's what you need to do. Everything needs to be moving. Uh, sure, you can do a couple of drawings that are a little bit more quiet. Uh, not a problem, but yeah, you, you definitely got to do some stuff that move. Uh, illustration department, if you're applying to a college where you want to get into the illustration department, it's a thousand percent about storytelling. You must tell stories with your artwork. If you do not, the chances of you getting into the animation, um, uh, into the illustration department go down immensely. Uh, it's also about your technical ability because you need to have really good technical skills uh, to be an illustrator. And when you're in high school, maybe your technical skills aren't great yet, uh, but you still got to do the best that you can. Uh, I don't know how this hair is. I'm just doing the hair out of my imagination. Let's do a little seven cervical vertebrae over here. I don't know where I want to take this drawing. Um, so an internship at an art studio, I, I do know there are a lot of the students at the School of Visual Arts, especially um, third and fourth year students get internships, second and first year students do not. And, uh, you know, I never did an internship, so I, I can just tell you what some of the students say. Uh, you just, you, you got to have a pretty good portfolio. Uh, yeah, you got to be skilled, but you got to be a really hard worker as well. And you just got to kind of fight for it because if you get like an, I, an internship in an animation company and they like you, um, the chances of them hiring you go up when you graduate from college because they know you and they know your work ethic. Hey, Mecca art doing good. Okay, so let's just turn the butt a little bit more softly into the light. So there's a little sacrum over here. We're keeping it very light, a little muddy in some areas there. Um, let's fade this leg off. I don't know if I, I like the way that looks. Let's just push the form. So Mecca Art, you aren't going to say gerbils a thousand times on this live stream, are you? No, there's no internships for gerbils. Somebody on Saturday on the live stream must have asked like 5,000 times. It was so rude. Like 5,000 times, can you look at my channel? Can you look at my channel? Can you look at my channel? So finally, I, I, I did learn... Uh, after that, I'm like, okay, I got to go to school on how to handle comments on YouTube because some people are just being way too rude. And I'm like, it's Saturday, I'm here, and I'm trying to help people, and this person's being obnoxious. Um, so yeah, if that happens again tomorrow, I'm just going to block that person. Cool. I'll probably do this for like another 10 more minutes, okay? Okay, so uh, the one thing that you've got to understand about figure drawing is there are no straight lines on the figure. Okay, so uh, this is a straight line at the scapula, so I need to turn that into an S-curve. And part of this drawing is getting a little heavy right now. It's probably because I keep working in the same area over and over and I'm not moving to the legs. 
Okay. Um, where should I start? I know how to draw pretty good. I'm taking about talking about school wise. So tell me the major that you want to major in animation, illustration, fine art, photography. Thank you, Sarah. Tell me the major. That's the answer right there. XTLX. What's up? Let's go for that right hand man. Fine art. So I remember when I was like 17 years old, uh, that was about 100 years ago, um, I went on, my dad was nice enough to take me to portfolio um, reviews at colleges all over the East Coast of uh, the United States. And I'll never forget, there was this Asian girl and I was shocked because I, I, you know, I was in my little bubble of where I live and she had these massive five feet by five feet paintings of buildings and they were amazing. And so with fine art, it's, I, I would, you know, try to do um, as much as you possibly can from life and try to uh, have themes with your artwork. So her theme was like uh, quaint, uh, historical architecture. So all of her paintings were these buildings that were amazing. Like they weren't modern buildings. They were all very old fashioned and the um, character of the buildings was amazing. So maybe you want to do like uh, for your fine art um, portfolio, maybe what you want to do is, is you want to do a series and maybe the series could be landscapes. Uh, maybe the series could be dreamscapes. There was a photography uh, high school student uh, who wanted to go into the photography de department and they um, photographed, they remade their dreams and photographed their dreams. Like you want to be original and you want to be authentic and you don't want to copy. Oklahoma, my God, I would love to live in Oklahoma. Seriously, I would love to live in Oklahoma. Wales, UK. Awesome, man. I'm, my wife and I are thinking about moving, and we just don't know where to move, but I definitely don't want to live in New York my whole life. Um, I'm pretty happy right now, and I have a nice house, and I have a nice life and all that stuff, but I just don't want to live in the same place my whole life, and I want to go to a state that's really open and huge and big. Philip, I have tried weekend classes at art schools. No comparison with a mentorship with Matt who gives you much personal and one-on-one -on -one guidance. Thank you, Philip. I really do appreciate that. Those are really kind words. Thank you. 9.30 p.m. It is 4.25 p.m. here on Eastern Long Island. Yeah, I would love to live at, in a big open state, have a big piece of property. Man, that's, that's what I would love. New York is, Long Island is just getting more and more um, polished jewelry. Love it. Los Angeles. How's the weather in Los Angeles? Now, at this point in the game, <laughs> Jesus, Mecca Art, Atlantis. Oh, God. Um, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Pennsylvania is gorgeous. Pennsylvania is so diverse. I went to Pennsylvania School of Art to go see a show when I was in college, and the landscape there just changes. It's so different. Chicago. Is it cold in Chicago right now? Yeah, Montana. I would love it. Nice, man. Yeah, I'm jealous. I'm jealous. Art Santa and Cal Arts are top picks. You know, I I have there. I consider them friends. I'll tell you a little story about a girl. Um, I haven't talked to her in in years. 
but she was a student at SVA and she was a type A personality and she was a lunatic and she was really talented. And um, she was a California girl. She was from California. And she's like, I want to go to Cal Arts. Can you help me? Can you write me a letter of recommendation? And I did. And she got into Cal Arts and she kicked butt. Um, and she just made, she did a, what is that thing called? I forgot the name of the site where um, people pay you money. What is the web? That's the where you create products and you put them up on the website and people donate money to get your product made. Well, she did that and she uh, became a millionaire with this kind of, I think it was this Dungeons and Dragons jewelry that she designed. Um, and she made over a million dollars. I just, I, I, I couldn't believe it. And she shared um, that with me like over 10 years later uh, because I gave her like a lot of uh, business uh, advice and how to become a self-employed artist and all that. And uh, you have to know that side of it as well. And so, yeah, Cal Arts, she had a really good education there. Fiverr or Etsy, I don't use either. All of my, um, my life is devoted to um, making content for my personal website, drawingtutorialsonline.com. So a lot of my energies go, goes there. And um, I, YouTube is really my thing. That's what I use the most. But I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I like having my own platform. That's why I never, I, and plus I started my own platform uh, before Patreon came to be. So Patreon is pretty popular. I don't use it um, just because I have so much invested in my own platform uh, that I, I use that. I like to have control and I don't, um, so I, plus all, I have a lot of nudity I have hundreds and hundreds of photographs on my website that people can draw from. Um, and so a lot of these platforms are anti-nudity. And if you're teaching figure drawing, that's insane. Uh, you have to have nudity. You have to have photographs that people can draw from. Uh, let's see here. Let's put some form lines in. All right. So let, I think I'm going to call this one quits. Uh, how long have I been even doing this? God, an hour. Okay. Um, 11.30 p.m. here. Thank you for the imp impromptu session. A warm-up for tomorrow. Thanks, Aura. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call this one quits. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, Kickstarter, thank you. Yes, she had a Kickstarter, and it was great. Yeah, I love lines. Uh, lines are my thing. And um, let me grab this drawing over here on the wall. Hold on, hold on, hold on. So... This is an older one. Uh, same thing, different paper. This one's a little smoother because I used a brush. Okay. I love lines because my favorite artist is Alphonse Maria Mucha. So um, you look at his drawings and yeah. Hey, Don, see you tomorrow. Catch up later, James. Yeah. Yeah, to, the thought of starting something else right now would just blows my mind. I can't do it. I have too much going on. Thank you for joining, everybody. I love the lines, so just try out the lines. Uh, thank you. I appreciate you all joining. Give the video a thumbs up. That would help. If you're not subscribed to the channel, subscribe to the channel. You can learn more about me in the show more section under the video. Uh, check out my Instagram. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Ash. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, Glenn. Thank you, Prayer Warriors. Uh, Meme, Neep, Soggy, Philip, thank you. I'll see you guys. Thanks for joining. Christina, you have a great day.